Hello my dear students, once again welcome to your online class. So today we will be going through the chapter, the chemical reaction which is the sixth chapter in a chemistry textbook. So coming to the chemical reaction, we have already learned about it in class 7 and class 6 as well. So in our day to day life, we see many kind of changes like some changes are common in nature and some are temporary in nature. So the changes which are permanent on which are irreversible and we can also say that in which the two of the compound or the element combines together to completely form a new substance is known as a chemical reaction okay so in this chapter we'll be dealing with these points i have which i have written in a blackboard we'll be reading what is a chemical reaction what are the necessary conditions for the chemical reaction to occur we'll also learn what is an endothermic and an exothermic process then we'll learn about the four types of chemical reaction that is the combination, decomposition, the single displacement and the double displacement and we will also learn what is oxidation and reduction and sixth point we will learn what is redox reaction and finally we will learn the four kind of oxide that is the basic oxide, acidic oxide, the neutral oxide and a amphoteric oxide. So to begin with the first one the chemical reaction so they are the one which are irreversible in which two of the elements or the compound it combines to form a completely new substance for example the reaction of a sodium with a chlorine it gives us a sodium chloride NaCl and what is this this sodium chloride is a common salt okay now we know that the common salt is edible okay so everyone eats the common salt in our everyday life but if you think about the two re reactants Okay, so sodium, it's a very, very dangerous metal. It's an explosive metal. As soon as it comes in contact with the water or the moisture, it explodes. And chlorine, it's a very poisonous gas. Okay, so here we see that our explosive metal combines with a poisonous gas to give something which is neither explosive nor poisonous. Okay, so this kind of reaction in which completely a new substance are formed is known as a chemical reaction. Now, there are certain necessary conditions for the chemical reaction to occur. So, what are the reactions? So, the first one, so they must be in a physical contact. Okay. So, the first necessary condition is the two of the reacting substances or the two of the reactant, it must be in a physical contact. And sometimes the chemical reactions occur only when the reactants are in the solution form. Okay, so the second necessary condition is sometimes the two of the reactants they must be in a solution form. The third one is sometimes the chemical reactions occur only in the presence of heat. Okay, so the two reactions like the formation of ammonia. So the nitrogen combines with the hydrogen only when a heat energy is supplied to it to form a ammonia gas. Another is some of the chemical reaction it requires light. For example, <coughs> the process of photosynthesis the photosynthesis <coughs> it cannot take place in the absence of light so some of the chemical reactions requires light now some requires a catalyst okay so now what is a catalyst the catalyst is the chemical substances that enhances the rate of chemical reaction sometimes it reduces the rate of chemical reaction also so the catalysts are of two kinds the positive catalyst which can increase the rate of chemical reaction and the negative catalyst which will decrease the rate of chemical reaction. So some chemical reactions take place only in the presence of catalyst like another we electricity or we can simply call it a current also. So some chemical reaction like the process of electrolysis it occurs only in the presence of electricity. Some occurs in the presence of high pressure. Okay, so some chemical reaction occur only when a high pressure is applied to the reactant. So these are some of the necessary conditions required for the chemical reactions to occur. That means the two of the reacting substance must be in a physical contact. Sometimes it must be in a solution form. Sometimes a heat energy is required. Sometimes a light is required. Sometimes the catalyst is required. Some chemical reaction occurs only when the electricity is passed through it. Some occurs only when a high pressure is applied to it. So now coming to the heat, okay, now to understand the third topic that is the exothermic and the endothermic reaction. So 
the chemical reaction in which the heat energy is absorbed. Okay, so I'll write here in itself. So, in which the heat is absorbed is known as an endothermic chemical reaction. Okay, so what is the endothermic chemical reaction? The endothermic chemical reactions are the one in which the heat energy is absorbed. And some, whenever the some chemical reaction occurs, the heat energy is given out. Such energy, such chemical reactions are known as exothermic. So, when heat is given out or we can call the heat is evolved. So, such chemical reactions are known as a exothermic chemical reaction. Exo means outward and endo means it's inward. So, the reaction in which the heat is taken in is known as the endothermic chemical reaction or the endothermic process and the one in which the heat energy is given out is known as a exothermic chemical reaction. Okay, and you also from your book you learn at least two examples of the endothermic and two examples of the exothermic chemical reaction. Now, coming to the fourth point types of chemical reactions. So, there are various types of chemical reactions, but here I have mentioned only a few of them, okay, and which is there in your book. So, the first one is the combination reaction. So, the name itself suggests that in a combination chemical reaction, the two of the elements, it combines to form a third product, a completely new product, like generally I can write for the combination reaction, like if A and B are the two combining reactants, it combines to give me A, B. Example is a sodium chloride. Sodium and a chlorine combines to form a sodium chloride. So, such chemical reactions in which the two reactants combine to form one single product is known as a combination reaction. Now, the second one is the decomposition reaction. So, decomposition reaction is the just opposite of combination. In this uh, one compound, okay, when heated or when a light energy falls on it or when the electric current is passed, it breaks into two of the combining elements or the constituent element. Okay, for example, copper oxide. When strongly heated, it forms a copper and a oxygen. Okay, so, the reaction in which a single compound breaks into two or sometimes more than two, such reactions are known as double, uh, sorry, decomposition reaction. Now, the third coming to the single displacement reaction. So, in this kind of reaction, what happens? the more reactive element, it displaces a lesser reactive element. Like if I have A, B, okay, A, B combining with a C. So, in this case, what happens if C is more reactive than B? So, what happens? The C will go and displace B. So, I will get A, C plus B. Hence, B is displaced. So, such kind of chemical reaction is known as a is known as single displacement reaction. So, the example of this you can go it into your book. Now, coming to the double displacement reaction. So, double displacement means here the displacement will occur two times. Like if I have two compounds A, B plus C, D. Okay, so, in this case what happens? The D and B, they will get interchanged. D will displace B and B will displace D. Okay, so, I will get A, B plus B, C. Okay, so, this kind of reaction is known as a double displacement reaction, where the displacement of the element occurs two times. Now, coming to the fifth point, the oxidation and reduction, you must be knowing what is the oxidation and reaction, but for one more time, the oxidation is the process or the chemical reaction in which the oxygen is added. Okay. So, the oxidation means So, we can say the oxidation is the process in which either the oxygen is added or hydrogen is removed or we can call the removal of electron as also the oxidation and then we have a reduction. So, reduction means just the opposite of oxidation. If the oxygen is removed or the hydrogen is added or even the electron is added. Okay, this process is known as reduction. So, you can define oxidation is a process in which either the oxygen is added or the hydrogen is removed or the losing of electron is also known as oxidation. But whereas the reduction is a process in which either the oxygen is removed or the hydrogen is added or the gaining of an electron is also known as reduction. Now, coming to the sixth point, the redox reaction. So, the redox reactions are the one in which the oxy oxidation and the reduction takes place simultaneously. Understood? So, what is the redox reaction? The redox reaction is the one in which the oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously. 
Now coming to the seventh point mentioned in this board, oxides. So what are the oxides? So whenever the metals or the non-metal reacts with the oxygen, that is known as an oxide. So now when the oxygen reacts with a non-metal, okay, then the oxide form is known as a acidic oxide. So non-metallic oxides are also known as a acidic oxide. Now coming to the basic oxide, what is a basic oxide now? The basic oxide, yes, and acidic oxides, they, the non-metallic oxide, they are known as the acidic oxide because when such compounds are dissolved in water, the solution form is acidic in nature. Now coming to the basic oxide, so the basic oxide, what does it mean? Whenever the oxygen reacts with the metal, like uh, when it reacts with the sodium, okay, we get Na2O, okay, a sodium oxide. So this sodium oxide is a basic oxide. So all the metallic oxides are known as a basic oxide. Why it is known as a basic oxide? Because sodium, when dissolved in water, it shows basic in nature. Now, before coming to the amphotelic oxide, we'll talk about the neutral oxide. So what are the neutral oxides? So the neutral oxides are the one which when dissolved in water, okay, the solution form will neither be acidic nor basic in nature. So such oxides are said to be a neutral oxide. Now coming to the last point, the amphotelic oxide, the amphotelic oxides are the one which reacts with the acid to form salt and water and it reacts with the base also to form salt and water. So the amphotelic oxide when treated with the acid, it behaves like a base and when treated with the base, it behaves like an acid. So that means the oxide which has, which shows a dual nature, that means that of acid and as well as base is known as a amphoteric oxide. So this is a very simple chapter, okay, but there are many chemical reactions for you to learn. So in what you will do is you will learn the definition of exothermic, endothermic, combination, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, oxidation, reduction, amphoteric oxide, everything but everything with a example, okay, with a balanced chemical equation as well. Okay, so if you do that much, so you are done, you will be done with this chapter. So now you are left with the exercise questions which I will help you to solve and the syllabus for your third online unit test is completed. So dear students, please go through all the videos and if you have any queries, you are always free to ask me. Thank you.